tonight, taking the first steps. Open day for many of our favourite places, how Sydney and the state celebrated. A public transport plea why you're being asked not to get on a bus or a train as the city gets moving again. Bids closing to buy Virgin Australia and there's already good news for points holders. Jail time for the man who attacked officers during an ice field rage in Campbelltown. Why the police union is now furious over the sentence. Donald Trump's threat to China. Could he rip up a trade deal worth hundreds of billions of dollars? And footy fans rejoice. AFL is back. The first rounds of the NRL revealed. Plus the dates for the big one. State of origin. This is 10 News First Sydney with Sandra Sully. Good evening. It is a very good Friday for New South Wales. After 53 days of lockdown, we're finally allowed back into the spaces and places that fill our lives. People are now gathering in small groups at least, in playgrounds and churches, pubs and cafes. The state taking the first steps along the long road to recovery. Opening up for the first time in seven weeks. The people have been missing, I think, being able to come to the cathedral. Giuseppe Coluccio, first in line, as a taped off St Mary's Cathedral allowed 10 people in for early mass. Although it is a limited number of 10 people, it is, as I said, a small step towards that full recovery. A step the Star Casino took as soon as it could, opening Japanese restaurant Sokyo at one minute past midnight serving sushi with a side of sanitizer. In Bondi, the morning coffee crowd were as happy as Larry at Harry's Cafe. Everyone's excited to kind of go back to normal, sit down, have their coffee. Daily rituals once taken for granted. Oh, I'm very excited. This is, I just had my first sort of cafe coffee in like three months. I'm pretty, it's good to be back out. It's kind of our home away from home, this place. So it's good to come back, sit on our little bench here and watch the world go by. Cafes, restaurants and pub bistros can now seat up to 10 customers. A welcome start, but it's still not financially viable for all to open. Carl Setter from St Lucifer's at Hurlston Park did put out his tables today, but says it's far from business as usual. 10 people, it helps, but it's not, it doesn't help us actually do full service yet. What number do you think you might need for full service? I think at least 20 would be good, which I understand is stage two. State Labor says many operators are confused about what they can do. It wants the government to release more consistent guidelines. So there are questions around social distancing. Can they have more tables outside? Will it mean uh, that they have to pay more council rates? Rache's at Chester Hill is one restaurant returning to full service, but with a slice of extra precautions. We are taking temperatures of our staff, we have gloves, we have masks, we have prepared ourselves in full for today for the opening. While police won't be counting the number of individual diners at venues... Look, I don't expect that will happen. Authorities will be keeping a close eye on any spread of the virus. It's not only cafes swinging back into action today, but also in some good news for parents and carers with cooped up children. Outdoor playgrounds have also reopened. Maybe don't tell the kids, though, until the weather improves. The tape is also off outdoor gyms. If you are staying at home, though, five people can now visit and for outdoor gatherings, that number doubles. Weddings can have 10 guests plus the happy couple and staff, while funerals are now allowed 20 mourners if they're held indoors and 30 if they're outside. Small steps to bring us closer together while keeping a safe distance. The way we move forward now is up to us. Lachlan Kennedy for 10 News First. The Premier has flagged more restrictions might be eased within two weeks, but as they are, the risk rises. So we're being asked to continue to do all we can to stop the spread. Public transport is a major concern, with the government pleading with the public to stay away during peak hour. Eight new cases were diagnosed across New South Wales with more than 12,000 tests carried out. We now have 3,071 cases across the state, while just over 2,600 people have recovered. And as Ali Donaldson reports, one of those new cases is causing alarm. As commuters get back on the road, social distancing can go out the window. And today, more troubling news for the travelling public. Returning from overseas, one healthy Aussie did everything right. After two weeks quarantine in Brisbane, 
He flew to Sydney, where he tested positive to COVID-19 yesterday. We are going to be doing contact tracing on the flight because we do believe they may have been infectious on the flight. He flew from Brisbane to Sydney on Qantas Flight 537 on Tuesday, May 12, arriving around 4.05pm. On the ground, Sydney's public transport is also under pressure. We don't want any more people at this stage catching public transport in the peak. Do not use public trans... If you're not already on the bus or the train in the morning, do not catch public transport in the peak. That, as many are being told, to return to work. The Premier of New South Wales has really left public transport as a dog's breakfast uh, for millions of commuters that rely on it every single day. Uh, it's kind of a necessity to get to work at the moment, so uh, as long as you're careful, I guess it's uh, not too bad. Try and not touch the seats or anything like that. Hope somebody pushes the stop button before me. It's just after eight in the morning and this bus stop would usually be packed with school children and workers. But today, no. That's all set to change next week, though, as school attendances start to ramp up. The opposition is calling for a public transport plan. As a parent myself, I'm completely perplexed about how she expects hundreds of thousands of school children to get to school. The Sydney University study has found 84% of commuters believe the car is the best option. 42% wanted to steer clear of buses. 33% weren't keen on trains. No one is hardly wearing any face masks. I mean, even myself, I'm not wearing anything right now, as opposed to when I was a few weeks ago. So it's quite alarming. We know overseas public transport, unfortunately, was the main reason why the disease spread. Making car sharing a handy option. People are getting back on the road and um, trip numbers have been up about 20%. Ali Donaldson for 10 News First. The Prime Minister has flagged domestic travel could hopefully be back on the cards by the next school holidays in July. But as Australia starts to reopen, our leaders are concerned about another health challenge. Life may appear to be slowly returning to normal. In some states, cafes and restaurants have started opening their doors. And I want to commend them for that brave step that they're taking this weekend. Good on you for reopening. But our leaders are worried about the next health, health crisis brought on by the pandemic. All of these pressures which come with the pandemic have created specific mental health challenges. Such as heightened loneliness in isolation and stress caused by job losses and finances. We do need to look at things such as risky behaviour that so many of us engaging in to try and cope with a pandemic. Those health issues associated with substance use and substance abuse, gambling. The federal government has committed an extra $48 million in additional support. Moving forward, they're concerned about suicide rates. It is heartening to look at those figures and to say it hasn't got worse. That doesn't mean it couldn't get worse. Because these things can build up, they can brew, people can dwell. And so we want to get ahead of the curve. The National Cabinet has also agreed to fully reopen elective surgery. The boom is going up on elective surgery all around the country. That will be done, of course, at the pace that states set. But that will be welcome particularly to the private uh, health industry. With yesterday's figures revealing nearly 600,000 Australians have lost their jobs in this pandemic, the National Cabinet's aim now is to get as many people back into work as soon and safely as possible. Some $220 billion in loan deferrals have already been put in place in our banking system. About two-thirds of that uh, in mortgages and one third for small and medium sized enterprises. International travel remains off the cards for the foreseeable future, but for those still returning. You can't test your way out of quarantine, unfortunately. Tegan George for 10 News First. The future of Virgin Australia will soon become a little bit clearer with bids to buy it closing in the next hour. For the company's workers and customers, there is already some good news. Its loyalty program now allows people to use their points again to fly. Virgin right now has no clear owner and few actual flights, but you can book them again using points. Well, I think the Virgin Awards um, announcement is an excellent one. It shows the confidence uh, that there will be 
uh, a virgin into the future. The first formal bids for the airline are being collected right now by the administrator, who set a 6pm deadline. Virgin still on track for a new owner by the end of next month. The union's favouring a long-term player, while the Prime Minister talks up the possibility of billions of dollars in domestic travel as international remains frozen. Australians who might otherwise go elsewhere, that is a very large market, and that um, will be targeted. But the strains on aviation are falling unevenly on the workers in it. Thousands of airport workers, catering staff, airport security people have found themselves caught out in a loophole. They have now been stood down, but because they're employed by foreign-owned companies, they are missing out on the JobKeeper payments. I was born in Australia, I grew up in Australia, I work in Australia and I pay taxes. Why am I and the people I work with not getting access to JobKeeper? When you don't have a work, when you don't have a job to get up to in the morning, you wake up and you think to yourself, what, what happened to the world? Six million Australians now rely on JobKeeper payments. Labor says this is a glitch. Josh Frydenberg can fix this with a stroke of a pen, and he needs to. Hugh Rimmington for 10 News First. Ricardo Barbaro is expected to arrive in Melbourne this evening after being extradited following his capture here in Sydney. The 33-year-old was arrested at a penthouse apartment in Wentworth Point yesterday and is now being transported to Victoria by road. He spent 10 days on the run after police discovered the body of his girlfriend, Ellie Price, in her South Melbourne home. Barbaro is expected to face court tomorrow. A knife-wielding man who gave police no choice but to shoot him has been sentenced to just two and a half years behind bars. It is a punishment the Police Association says is not enough for such a serious and scary crime. And a warning, this story does contain some confronting video. When the police officer shot Robert Hampton, it was his last offence against a drug-induced man who was threatening to launch a kitchen knife at him like a spear. It was a very dangerous situation with members of the public nearby, not just the police. It's an offence that carries a maximum of 12 years in jail, but due to his early guilty plea, apology and the fact that he's serving his sentence with a colostomy bag, he got just two years and seven months. And to see a sentence like this is another slap in the face for the hard-working police around this state. In sentencing today, we learned that the 40-year-old is a self-described drug addict who started using when he was just 12 and that he spent 22 of the last 23 years behind bars. But Judge Julia Bawley found that Hampton had shown remorse and that he understands the impact this has had on the community, saying the biggest wake-up call for him was getting shot because of his own actions. Hampton, who is now on the methadone program in prison, will be eligible for release in December next year, at which time it's hoped he will finally begin his adult life on the outside. Kimberly Pratt for 10 News First. It is less than two weeks to go until the NRL kicks off again and we finally know who is playing who. Matt Burke is along now with all the details. Matt, take it away. Yeah, good evening, Sandra. Well, it might only be two rounds so far, but it's a start. League power brokers have finally nutted out the initial fixtures for the restart of the season. Roz Kelly is live at NRL HQ and Roz, a local derby to start things off. That's going to be absolutely fantastic. Matt, it has been eight weeks since the NRL was put on hold and Rugby League's return will be headlined by one of the oldest rivalries in the game. The Roosters and Rabbitohs going head-to-head -head in a round three Friday night blockbuster. Now the revamped uh, season will officially relaunch with the Broncos hosting the Eels on Thursday, May 28. And while the league is yet to finalise venues, acting NRL CEO Andrew Abdo promises plenty of drama and entertainment for the remainder of the 17-round season, which will be revealed next Thursday. Yeah, I mean, we're all here um, because our fans love football. Um, the rule changes, uh, the draw, everything is ultimately about the fans. And having uh, big rivalry blockbusters in the first, uh, first few games back, rounds three and four, is absolutely part of our thinking. 
And AFL CEO Gil McLaughlin today announced the AFL will resume two weeks after the NRL on June 11, with teams to begin full training on Monday and fixtures to be announced in blocks of six weeks. Matt? Sounds exciting. Thank you, Roz. Sandra, I can smell the liniment already. It's starting. <laughs> I know, and the excitement's <laughs> building. Thank Very. you, Matt. Stay with us after the break. Fears of an outbreak as an aged care nurse test positive for COVID-19. Frontline reinforcements meet our newest class of paramedics. Donald Trump threatens to cut all ties with China, jeopardising billions in trade. A very real example of how a winter heater can turn deadly and how artificial intelligence is being used to help improve the odds of IVF. Mmm, who doesn't love... A classic apple pie. Apple pie is very simple. How can I elevate it? How can I elevate it? I really want to do something that's very theatrical. And I want to blow the judges away. I'm going to go now. I'm going to go now. Can I see? It's a lot of pressure. They're watching me. I'm trying to ignore them. I'm just trying to stay calm. I'm feeling a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. This dome, this dome has to be perfectly done. Has to be perfectly done. There's no room for error. No room for error. Oh! I hear a crack. The night where another one of your favorites goes. The bombshell elimination on 10. Who will go? 7.30 Sunday. Right now, it's time to stay home. But don't ever stop dreaming of your next adventure. Because even though we're home for now, it won't be forever. Woolworths Online Shopping is back for all customers. We have thousands of extra delivery and pickup windows now open to serve even more customers. Visit woolworths.com.au and start shopping today. To help you get the most from the post during these difficult times, we've set up 15 temporary facilities to help deliver the 2 million parcels we're currently processing every day. For more, visit Auspost Online and thank you for your patience. Is frequent heartburn interrupting your life, causing you to reach for short-term relief over and over again? There is a better way. Unlike antacids that often require multiple doses per day, Nexium 24-Hour provides longer-lasting protection from frequent heartburn with just one tablet a day. Nexium 24-Hour provides round-the-clock protection. Live life less interrupted. Get Nexium 24-Hour for a great price at Chemist Warehouse. Meet the crew, they got their own way of bed. And this is me, I've always got the answer. Make this Saturday one to remember. Get $4 odds for either Geetra or Santa and Elaine to win the Goodwood. Points bet. To help get your dream of a new home back on track, we're giving you an incredible $45,000 cash discount on all Mojo homes. This offer is only available for a limited time, so visit a display home today. When we can all get out of our own backyards, it's time to start enjoying this one. In a 10 special, we talk to the people and visit the places that remind us why we're so lucky to live in the lucky country. Join us for the Love Australia Project, 7.30 tonight on 10. Police have declared the death of a woman with cerebral palsy a major crime after it was revealed she was allowed to die in disgusting and degrading circumstances. Now, they allege the 54-year-old, who relied on an NDIS carer for all her needs, had not left her chair for more than a year, eventually dying from severe septic shock and organ failure. 
Anne Smith was found only semi-conscious in her home on April 5, dying in hospital a day later, without even a shred of the dignity any human deserves. We were able to identify that Anne died in disgusting and degrading circumstances and that her death was most likely preventable. The outside of her leafy eastern suburbs home was flawless, hiding the horror within. Living her days and sleeping at night in the same woven cane chair in a lounge room for over a year. Her wheelchairs were unused in another room. There was no fridge and no food. Even hardened detectives barely able to describe where she lived out her days. And she's unable to go to the toilet on her own. She's unable to bathe or wash herself. She's unable to feed herself. I'll leave that to everybody's imagination. The 54-year-old had severe cerebral palsy and had been on her own since her parents died more than a decade ago. She couldn't walk, bathe, feed or dress herself. In 2013, she was placed on an NDIS care plan delivered through a local company in Adelaide. She was funded for six hours of care every day of the week, but by the time she made it to hospital, she had septic shock and multi-organ failure. Where she subsequently underwent major surgery to remove rotting flesh from severe pressure sores on her body. Records from the care company have been seized and a carer has been interviewed by police. Their home searched. Police are also investigating whether Anne's finances were accessed. Her death declared a major crime. Well, it's not so much not, not a matter of not being found. Every day she has a carer come in. Uh, you know, the question for us is how did Anne become so unwell when she has a full-time carer. Hannah Ford for 10 News First. Now, we have just received a statement from the NDIS and a spokesman says that action has been taken in respect of the provider involved and it will continue to investigate the circumstances of the death which breached the provider's obligations. Well, fears are growing that a central Queensland aged care facility could be at the centre of a COVID outbreak. A nurse working at the North Rockhampton Nursing Centre last night tested positive to the virus. She had been working while unwell for 12 days, putting at risk 115 residents and 180 staff. She had also been out in the community. We are regarding all 115 residents and all 180 staff as potentially having been in contact. Some patients have already been tested and their results have returned a negative test. Queensland's Chief Health Officer is ordering anyone in Rockhampton showing corona symptoms to please get tested immediately. Well, some of our frontline workers bearing the brunt of this COVID crisis are getting some much needed help. A new fleet of ambulances and a whole new team of recruits are about to hit the streets. In the heart of Sydney, a man is found lying on a footpath, drunk, tired and disorientated, but OK. You are just had a few drinks. Even with routine call-outs like this, the coronavirus threat is now top of mind for our first responders. I've got a two-and-a-half-year-old at home as well, so it takes it more of a shock um, just being exposed to potential COVID cases. Fortunately this patient doesn't have the virus but for our paramedics there's no way of knowing until they arrive on scene and run basic checks. Yeah, I'm just going to check your temperature as well buddy. And making sure that we are safe um, and we're not picking up any diseases to pass on to our family or the next patient we see. The precautions, while necessary, are unavoidably chewing up our paramedics' valuable time. To help address that, there'll soon be more of them and new vehicles. Those on the front line say these investments couldn't come at a more crucial time as the pandemic piles pressure on already strained paramedics. 467 recruits have been fast-tracked into the service to be spread across Sydney and the regions. And they'll also have some new technology to play with. 89 state-of-the-art ambulances with improved life-saving defibrillators and critical airway equipment. In certain times, in peak times, our resources can get stretched a bit thin. There'll be more ambos to respond to those calls and reduce those call-out times to give our sick and injured a fighting chance while helping those who help us. Michael Hammond for 10 News First.
Fire crews have demonstrated just how quickly a heater can turn deadly. Within seconds, sparks can catch and within minutes, a home can be engulfed in flames. A sight seen all too often last winter. Thick black smoke billows from this lounge room. Fiery showing just how easily homes are set alight as a rug catches fire after being too close to a heater. In the space of a few minutes, um, we went from a very safe lounge room to an uh, inferno that was over 1100 degrees Celsius. Serious heat, meaning there's no time to spare when escaping an inferno. So we want people out of their homes before um, the fire gets to that stage. There were only 81 fires in autumn last year, but nearly 1,000 more in winter, a 93% increase across the seasons. More than half of those started in the kitchen, while a large number also started in the bedroom. Problems there with that story, we apologise. It is Friday night. Everyone, of course, is in a rush to get home or get out, especially tonight. So what sort of impact is that having on traffic flows? Let's find out from Vic LaRusso. Vic? Chandra, it's definitely a busy into the city. We've got live pictures there of the Anzac Bridge. You can see from the inner west into town and there's plenty of headlights heading towards the CBD and also out of the city towards the inner west. We've already noticed sections through Leichhardt a little slower up the city west link heading towards Norton Street. We've had traffic delays heading through to Ride just off Church Street. So definitely um, a whole lot of traffic trying to head around the CBD. We've had delays getting into the city too from the lower north shore from the Spit Bridge and now an accident in our southern suburbs impacting traffic. So motorists getting home late tonight through Loftus with the Princess Highway impacted at Farnell Avenue. Vic LaRusso, live from the Cassidy Traffic Centre. Now to the weather with our favourite friend on a Friday who always delivers the late mail on the weather. Tim Bailey, take it away. Hey, Souls. Yeah, well, I've got to be honest with you. I did have a grizzle about the drizzle today, but I'll fix it for the weekend, folks. Looks like the grey stuff will move offshore of Sydney and further north up the New South Wales coast. A sunny Saturday on the way. All right, to the weather wall, and let's have a look at temperatures on a not-so-fab Friday. Down to 10, a top of just 16. It had a bite about it, didn't it? Currently, it is 14 degrees. New South Wales, how did you look on one of the favourite days of the week? Broken Hill, 16 degrees. The high, though, 23 at Casino. The low, Perisher Valley, minus 7. You knew you were alive. Wagga Wagga, 2 through to 17. Canberra, 15. 19 degrees, Bega. Newcastle did 17. Coffs Harbour, 21. And Lismore, 23 degrees. Sydney, well, this was you today. Parramatta, 17. Penrith, 20. 18. Campbelltown. Mascot, 16. It was chilly in Gosford, 16. And Terry Hills, the goosebumps gathered for 15 degrees. Working on the blue sky for a little thing called a weekend. It's important work. So, yeah. So. It is. Thank you, Tim. Stay with us after the break. A new COVID antibody test that's been labelled 100% effective. Millions of Russians sent back to work despite high case numbers. And going out with a bang, Germany takes a big step towards green energy production. Checking today's petrol prices around the suburbs of Sydney and the cheapest we found today was at Fort Villawood and that was around 92 cents, almost 93. The average price across the city tonight, $1.13. Car City is making it easier for you to safely buy your next vehicle, seven days a week. Wander comfortably through 10 acres of vehicles while safely practicing social distancing or find the car you want online and we'll bring it to you. Carlisle Avenue, Minchinbury. carcity.com.au Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? For the first time in a MasterChef elimination. You're going to cook head to head against the person next to you. <laughs> I really want to do something that's very theatrical. Reynolds. And I want to blow the judges away. The night where another one of your favourites goes. I'm feeling a lot of pressure. The Bombshell Elimination, 7.30 Sunday. Introducing BP Rewards. Now you can earn points for every BP purchase. BP Rewards. Use BP points to spend in store. BP Rewards. Or get dollars off fuel. BP Rewards. BP Rewards. Or you can choose to earn Qantas points. Now that's what I call BP Rewards. Totally BP Rewards.
without earning today. BP Rewards. Your rewards, your way. At Harvey Norman, get 60 months interest-free and receive a bonus gift card up to the value of $500. The more you spend on 60 months interest-free, the greater the value of the bonus gift card. Shop for laptops, TVs, fridges, ovens, lounges, beds, flooring, bath vanities and so much more. Shop in our spacious stores or online. We're practising social distancing to keep our community safe. Get 60 months interest-free and receive a bonus gift card valued at up to $500 now at Harvey Norman. Hurry, offer ends Tuesday. Go! Get AHM hospital cover from only fifteen seventy five a week. Yay. It's that easy. So you can get back to doing whatever it is you like to do. Even that. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. Want to sell something for instant cash? We're open. Looking to buy from a huge range of quality second-hand goods for less? We're open. Cash converters. Find us online or visit us in store. Starbucks coffee is coming home. Now available in supermarkets. With Light and Easy, you can still enjoy a huge variety of delicious, healthy meals in the comfort and safety of your home, thanks to their chefs and dietitians and their contactless delivery service. In fact, Light and Easy has recently been rated Australia's number one healthy meal delivery service, scoring five stars for customer satisfaction, as well as taste, variety and freshness, all things you'll find on their autumn menu. Enjoy delicious, healthy meals with Light and Easy's contactless, award-winning delivery. Order today. Your next royal TV show obsession. I'm married to an idiot. God himself spat me forth for greatness. Why don't you make you a woman then? For comedy. The brand new series, The Great, premieres tomorrow only on Stan. The 15th is a big day for us. It's 20K day when all our Division 1 winners get their next 20K. <laughs> Carol! You've won set for life! Another $20,000, Donna! <laughs> Every month! I'm gonna go! It's been a big day. All right! Doug, set for life. It's 20K on replay. Play now in store at thelot.com or on the Lot app. Sandra O oh and Stanley Tucci <laughs> join Graham Norton for a night of five-star fun. I've got goosebumps. 8.30 tonight on 10. In another day of corona chaos in the United States, President Donald Trump has lashed out, threatening to end America's relationship with China. In retaliation, Chinese state media labelled the president a baby on the brink of a meltdown. It comes as the US infection rate closes in on one and a half million with more than 85,000 deaths. Donald Trump arrived in Pennsylvania to a warm welcome, but it's his relationship with China's President Xi that could be about to go on ice. Right now, I don't want to speak to him. There are many things we could do. We could do things. We could cut off the whole relationship. Something that would no doubt please supporters like this, the president visiting a mask factory of all places and refusing to wear one. Thank you, all that social distancing. Look at you people all spread out six feet. That's pretty impressive. But we like it the old way, the little bit better, don't we? Trump announced he'll restore the national stockpile of medical supplies. My goal is to produce everything America needs for ourselves and then export to the world, and that includes medicines. While at a Senate hearing, this mask maker testified that he warned of shortages. I've been working on this damn issue for 13 years, trying to save lives. Nobody listened. Others also tried to sound the alarm. He said, we're in deep the world is, and we need to act. And I pushed that forward to the highest levels I could in HHS and got no response. This immunologist turned whistleblower claims he was fired for speaking out when the president began promoting an untested malaria drug. Americans deserve the truth. The truth must be based on science. But this is what Americans are being told instead. It could be the testings, frankly, uh, overrated. Donald Trump is continuing to lay blame on his predecessor, Barack Obama, saying he didn't leave behind an adequate pandemic plan. Today, the former president hit back, posting a single word on social media, vote. 
in Wisconsin, bars opened immediately after the Supreme Court struck down the statewide stay-home order, the world's most infected country, with a patchwork pandemic response. Eamon Ashton Atkinson for 10 News First, New York. There has been a positive development in the fight against COVID-19 with a British antibody test confirmed as 100% accurate. While the test won't stop the spread of the virus, it can identify who's had it, making it a powerful tool in tracking the virus. Britain's NHS has also released research showing of the 22,000 people who died of the virus since March, 95% had a pre-existing medical condition, more than a quarter of those had diabetes, while 18% suffered from dementia. Muscovites are heading back to work despite their city and Russia still reporting daily infections in the thousands. President Putin has declared six weeks of national lockdown to be over and ordered millions back to their jobs. Russia has more than a quarter of a million cases but has only reported 2,300 deaths, a number many believe is dramatically lower than the real toll. Germany has taken another loud and dusty step towards becoming nuclear power free, blowing up two cooling towers in the country's west. Controlled explosions brought one tower down at a time, perfectly inside their own footprints. The power station's reactors were shut down back in 2011 and in 2019 as part of the country's move towards green energy. Stay with us. Still to come, how artificial intelligence could improve the odds of conceiving through IVF. What message human rights lawyer Amal Clooney had for our politicians? And HSC exams will be delayed, but for how long? Those details are next. Follow the stories of these lovable pooches as they go from abandoned to adopted, to adored. <laughs> so, oh, you're a good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. The brand new series, The Doghouse, premieres tomorrow on 10. Right now, it's time to stay safe. Right now, it's time to stay home. But there's one thing you should never stop doing, and that's dreaming of your next adventure. Because even though today we can't hit the beach, we can't head for the hills, or even just push the boat out, it won't be forever. Meet the crew, they got their own way of bed. And this is me, I've always got the answer. Make this Saturday one to remember. Get $4 odds for either Geetra or Santa Anna Lane to win the Goodwood. Points bet. Notice anything? Oh, look at these greys. For a second I thought, okay, greys, I'm ready to see you. But I'm not. I am not ready for this much grey. Excellence Creme by L'Oreal Paris. I don't think there's ever going to be a better before and after. Three steps for 100% grey coverage and rich, radiant colour. Oh my god, I'm so happy. <laughs> Boom! This is what I'm talking about. Self-care is self-worth. Because now, more than ever, we're all worth it. Looking for an effective answer to wrinkles and dark spots? Try Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream from Chemist Warehouse. Clinically proven to help smoothen fine lines and fade the look of dark spots. Pair together with Rapid Wrinkle Repair Retinol Oil for twice the wrinkle fighting power. It works throughout the night to intensely nourish and replenish dry skin. Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream is $24.49 at Chemist Warehouse. Live, look, feel fabulous every day at Chemist Warehouse. Introducing BP Rewards. Now you can earn points for every BP purchase. BP Rewards. Use BP points to spend in store. BP Rewards. Or get dollars off fuel. BP Rewards. BP Rewards. Or you can choose to earn Qantas points. Now that's what I call BP Rewards. Totally BP Rewards. Start earning today. BP Rewards. Your rewards, your way. At Apia, we're all about possibilities and making sure you're ready for them. And while not everything is possible at the moment, there are some things you can do. 
with APIA's comprehensive insurance, you can double up and save. Simply buy new eligible home and car insurance together before July 10 and save 20% off the second policy. Our dedicated specialists are ready to help. Call 13 50 50 or visit apia.com.au. Meet the crew. They got their own way of betting. And this is me. I've always got the answer. Make this Saturday one to remember. Get $4 odds for either Geetra or Santa and Elaine to win the Goodwood. Points bet. To help you get the most from the post, we've chartered eight extra freighter flights to help deliver the more than 2 million parcels we're processing every day. For more, visit Auspost online. And on behalf of everyone at Australia Post, thank you for your patience. Will an apple pie serve the Dessert King home? Bombshell Elimination, Sunday. Tonight's top stories. After seven weeks, our strict lockdown has lifted, allowing d dinners in cafes and restaurants and children in playgrounds. It comes as the state records eight new COVID cases. The government is urging people to remain vigilant and continue to minimise the risk, including avoiding peak hour travel. And the future of urban Australia may soon be secure, with bids to buy the airline closing in the next half hour. Today, the freeze on velocity points was lifted, allowing people to redeem their points for flights come September. The man who killed Thomas Kelly in a one-punch attack, sparking Sydney's lockout laws, has now faced court over another violent assault. This time, Kieran Loveridge is accused of attacking a fellow prisoner who fought back. From inside Silverwater Jail, an unprovoked violent assault. The attacker is 26-year-old Kieran Loveridge. He's serving more than 10 years for the one-punch killing of Thomas Kelly in 2012. This time, his victim is Matthew Reimer, the one-time president of the Rebels' bikey gang. The two wrestle on the ground before Loveridge is dragged away. And later, Reimer took his opportunity to attempt revenge, but the guards were quick to move in. Loveridge was back in court today over that attack, pleading he was the victim, telling the court he was placed in with rebels, despite prison officials knowing he was associated with the lone wolf bikey gang, two sworn enemies. Loveridge said, I knew Reimer from the same area. I knew he was the president of the rebels since I was a kid. I just thought I'm going to go for it. The court also heard a phone call from Loveridge to his mother boasting after the attack. He told her, I said, you're Matty Reimer, are you? And he says, yeah, who are you? I'm a wolf. What a lone wolf, Reimer says. And I said, yeah, let's kill each other. And then I smashed him in the face. The Crown prosecutor told the court, regardless of his reasons, Loveridge deserves to be punished. Has he learned his lesson? Has he learned not to resort to violence? I think not, she said. But Judge Robert Sutherland showed concerns about how and why prison officials allowed Loveridge to be in with rebels, despite his papers having a clear alert against it. The judge also asked Loveridge about the attack on Thomas Kelly that landed him in jail in the first place. He did show some remorse. He said, I never knew the bloke. I was just in the city celebrating making the Bulldogs under-20s team when he hit him. And he said, unfortunately, the kid just died. This is not the first time Loveridge has found trouble behind bars. In 2015, he was transferred to Goulburn Supermax after having an affair with a female prison guard. She was later sacked. The judge will decide on this sentence on May 25. Steve Hart for 10 News First. A big admission from a big bank, Westpac, today. The company conceding it breached 23 million money laundering laws. In defence documents submitted to the federal court, Westpac also admitted that it failed to adequately monitor 12 customers accused of making suspicious payments linked to child exploitation. The bank has signalled it intends to settle and has put aside $900 million for that, which would be the biggest penalty in our corporate history. Year 12 students will have extra time to cram this year with the HSC exams delayed by five days. Originally scheduled for October 15, testing will now commence on the 20th to give students more time in the classroom. It is hoped the additional face-to-face -face learning will compensate for some of the disruption caused by COVID-19. 
Matt Burke is back now with more news in sport. Matt, a big step today towards rebooting both major footy codes. Plenty of people pleased about this one, Sandra. Good evening. The NRL and AFL have agreed and geared up their plans to resume their 2020 seasons as the NRL released a revamped draw featuring old and modern day rivalries. While the AFL clubs get to go full steam ahead into contact training ahead of the June 11 kickoff. Car City is making it easier for you to safely buy your next vehicle seven days a week. Wander comfortably through 10 acres of vehicles while safely practicing social distancing or find the car you want online and we'll bring it to you. Carlisle Avenue, Minchinbury. Carcity.com.au. Singer songwriter Missy Higgins joins us tonight, 16. Have we got a sweet must see Monday for you? Good to hear. <laughs> At 7.30, it's the sweet and savoury mistake no one sees coming. Then, these stars are bringing sweet lockdown laughs. I'm doing a lot of online shopping. Oh, like a one woman stimulus package, which coincidentally is something I ordered. That's must see Monday. Sweet. One, two, three, four. So clap it back. Hey, clap, clap. So clap it back. Centrum provides multiple health benefits in just one tablet. Centrum, complete from A to Z. Some people have more important things to do than watch racing on a weekend. Some people. Catch every race this autumn with Sky Live Vision. Tab, long may we play. Gamble responsibly. A third generation butcher, born and bred. Pop's traditional recipes fill his head. His award winning sausages are so sublime, you can enjoy these beauties anytime. The British Sausage Ham and Bacon Company, Australian made the British way. The Australian Government is supporting individuals and households during the coronavirus crisis. We've introduced the $550 coronavirus supplement, doubling income support for many. It means those on the job seeker payment could receive up to $1,100 a fortnight. We're also providing two $750 payments to veterans, pensioners and other households receiving income support. These automatic payments will support up to 5 million Australian households. To find out more, visit australia.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. We remain dedicated to helping Australians. We've introduced a help program with a range of relief options to assist customers currently in need. Call us to find out how we can tailor help options for you. Your next Royal TV show obsession. I'm married to an idiot. God himself spat me forth for greatness. Why don't you make you a woman then? For comedy. The brand new series, The Great, premieres tomorrow only on Stan. Experience the delicious intensity of Lint excellence by the Lint Master Chocolatier. Supporting people with a disability is very close to my heart and now I'm asking you to help too. This year, Endeavour Foundation is celebrating 69 years of helping people with a disability live their best lives. Help by buying a ticket in their June lottery to win this brand new million dollar prize home on the Sunshine Coast. This fully furnished four bed, three bath home comes with a beautiful pool, fire pit and $10,000 cashable gold. So buy your ticket at endeavourlotteries.com.au. This Saturday with Sportsbet, get the best payout across all three tabs with top toad exotics. Nail a Quinella, Trifecta or even a Quaddy and you'll get the biggest return. Top toad exotics from Sportsbet. Sandra O oh and Stanley Tucci <laughs> join Graham Norton for a night of five-star fun. I've got goosebumps. 8.30 tonight on 10. Good evening. One of the highlights of the NRL's reworked draw could give us the grudge match of the season with Latrell Mitchell to face his former club, the Roosters. While the venues are to be confirmed, fans at least know who their club plays for the first fortnight, with the Broncos and Para rebooting the season on May 28. Finally, some good news for acting NRL CEO Andrew Abdo to deliver, and the relief was clear. But we remain on track for May 28, and now we know which games we can look forward to 
in just under two weeks' time. The Eels are heading on a road trip to reboot the season against the Broncos. Melbourne meet 2019 grand finalists Canberra for the first time since the finals. And a classic Rabbitohs Roosters grudge match will spice up the first Friday night of footy. I think there's a little bit more in it um, when you play against the Roosters. Latrell Mitchell will meet his former club for the first time since their messy breakup. Despite his patchy early form at fullback, Rabbitohs teammates are urging patience with the star recruit. Yeah, the way we've been training at the moment, Latrell's staying at fullback. Doesn't bother me where he plays. He's, he's, he's a wonderful talent. Just his skill level at training has been you know, unbelievable. The Broncos back up the following Thursday, while Friday the Panthers, minus Nathan Cleary, host the Warriors. The Eels' manly rivalry is reignited Saturday before the annual Queen's Birthday clash between the Dragons and Bulldogs. There are lots of blockbusters and great games in those uh, two weekends. The Dogs resume their season against the Sea Eagles, but coach Dean Pay feels there's been too many changes in the rush to kick off on May 28. It certainly looks like a different competition for where we sit. You know, I can't see why we can't have every team back you know, starting on zero points again. The Dragons are preparing for the Warriors. First up, coach Paul McGregor, all for one referee. If selfishly, if I look at, you know, the Dragons, we give the least amount of penalties away in, in holding people down. Ros Kelly for 10 News First. The Sydney Swans and GWS Giants will return to team training on Monday with the AFL season to restart on Thursday, June 11. All players from every club will be tested for COVID-19 twice a week and subject to a raft of restrictions. It's been a long, tough haul back and at stages they weren't entirely sure they'd make it. I think it, someone told me it's 54 days ago or something like that. Um, I think we've, then you must have had doubts. The AFL boss announced Thursday night, June 11, as the first game back with training starting next week. For Monday, all clubs will return to training. And all AFL clubs will resume full contact training a week later on May 25. And while we have a return date, we don't have an end date. For the first time ever, the AFL is keeping its options open on not only when the grand final will be played, but where. We'll have to be flexible on that. Um, uh, the default position is the MCG until things change. The clubs have just under four weeks to get themselves ready. Oh, look, it's, it's not ideal, but we'll work through it. Um, the boys just want to play footy, I just want to play footy. I think the community is looking forward to us playing footy. We'll be, we'll be right. Players will be coronavirus tested twice a week and they've agreed to a raft of restrictions on the way they live. Their homes will be risk assessed. There's a set of protocols that needed to be agreed to get the... Um, to have the ability for football teams to travel around the country. And this is one of them. Obviously, there is risk depending on who players live with. Each household will be assessed for risk. Um, there will be restrictions on visitors to households. Um, so th there's, a, there's a full suite of those. The AFL is using a flexible fixture and intends to roll it out every four to six weeks. McLaughlin thanked the governments and their health authorities for their support and trust. We're going to have lumps and bumps through this. We'll work through this. But I hope that we, we, we uh, you know, for some people who are doing it tough, the footy is a bit of a something to look forward to. Rob Waters for 10 News First. Media executive Hamish McLennan is the new chairman of Rugby Australia. The former Network 10 boss and News Corp exec, McLennan will take over from interim chairman and former Wallaby Paul McLean. His immediate focus will be a broadcast deal with a revamped Super Rugby competition and a successful bid to host the 2027 Rugby World Cup, while a $14 million financial rescue package just landed from World Rugby. Renault's team boss has accused the departing Daniel Ricciardo of disloyalty after the Australian Formula One driver signed with McLaren. Ricciardo preferred to praise his current drive on social media, saying, I am grateful for my time at Renault F1 team and the way I was accepted into the team. But we aren't done and I can't wait to get back on the grid this year. My next chapter isn't here yet, so let's finish this one strong. Thank you. The Aussie replaces Carlos Sainz at McLaren who takes the seat of Sebastian Vettel at Ferrari. And Sandra, next year, the Ferrari seat, well, that's obviously taken, but McLaren get a new engine as well. They get a Mercedes engine. So things may be looking up for Di Ricciardo.
I just want to see him on the main podium. Very much. Don't we all? Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Coming up next, we are back with our top stories as the state marks its first day out of lockdown. And to be honest with you, the observations at Observatory Hill today were a wee bit dodgy. I'll do a lot better, I promise. The Saturday weather report from the Daily Bailey Weather Wall is next. Stick around for Tommy's Legends of Lockdown next. When we can all get out of our own backyards, it's time to start enjoying this one. In a 10 special, we talk to the people and visit the places that remind us why we're so lucky to live in the lucky country. Join us for the Love Australia Project, 7.30 tonight on 10. Chloe and Zoe are twins and Amy customers. So you have the same taste. We both like our crafted cushions and finished faux fur. We love our HD LED, LED LCD, 4K, 4K pixel TVs. Do you choose to save now or later on your insurance? Now. Later. Buy a home or car insurance policy and Amy Flexi Premiums lets you vary your excess to save now or later. Choose a higher excess to save now or choose a lower excess to save at claim time. You're with Amy. Meet the crew. They got their own way of bed. And this is me. I've always got the answer. Make this Saturday one to remember. Get $4 odds for either Geetra or Santa and Elaine to win the Goodwood. Points bet. Introducing BP Rewards. Now you can earn points for every BP purchase. BP Rewards. Use BP points to spend in store. BP Rewards. Or get dollars off fuel. BP Rewards. BP Rewards. Or you can choose to earn Qantas points. Now that's what I call BP Rewards. Totally BP Rewards. Start earning today. BP Rewards. Your rewards, your way. Let's hear it for the quitters. In Australia, there are 144 fewer smokers each week. And with Nicorette Quick Mist, you're two and a half times more likely to succeed. Nicorette. Let's do something amazing. Nescafe Blend 43 is made right here in country Queensland. Robusta and Arabica roasted individually, then brought together for the perfect cup. Nescafe Blend 43, the perfect blend of bold and smooth. Glorious beef eye fillets are now just $19.99 a kilo at Aldi. It's high-end steak without the high-end price. Oh, how dare you, you, you. Animals. Aldi. Good. Different. Does your energy provider chip in for your internet? Dodo does. Yep, we're an energy company. And an internet company. Which is why you get unlimited data on our NBN 50 plan for just 60 bucks a month when you also get electricity and gas. Switch at dodo.com. You don't give in. You don't give up. It's called Aussie spirit. And it takes spirit to get through times like these. It's what inspires us to help. Together we'll get through this. Search Toyota here to help. Meet the crew. They got their own way of bed. And this is me. I've always got the answer. Make this Saturday one to remember. Get $4 odds for either Geetra or Santa and Elaine to win the Goodwood. Points bet. Will an apple pie send the dessert king home? The bombshell elimination. Sunday. Yes, he's back. Don't you love it on a Friday? Mr. Bailey, in the dictionary of you, Bailois, <laughs> Bailois, that's a word I just made up, that was a grey on but you know I want a blue on this weekend, please. And I know you are the Queen of News, and what <laughs> you say goes. So that's what I'm up to, folks. That was, I've got to apologise, that was a fairly ordinary looking day for a Friday. Normally they're fabulous. The grey stuff, yeah, it was hard to get rid of, but it is on the move, thanks to a trough that is moving to northern New South Wales, just off the coast. Let's hit the Daily Bailey weather wall, the forecast where we get it all. As you can see, most of Australia is cloud free, thanks to a big high pressure system. Apart from this little trough that is just working away off the north coast of New South Wales. Now, that is going to drag some precipitation from the mid-north coast up to the northern rivers tomorrow. Hopefully, Sydney's clearing right about now. If not, well, in the early hours of the morning. So most of New South Wales will have a sunny Saturday. A blue sky, that's what we're after, or as Sol's just said, a blue sky thon. Let's have a look at the weather map for you. And I did mention the big high-pressure system out over the south.
southeast. It is dominating. It really is. A bit of a trough through WA, a cold front to the south west of Tasmania and the trough just off the north coast of New South Wales are the major players. But trust me, the high is going to deliver what you like to see, a shiny blue sky for most of the state. Of course, the northern rivers probably gets onshore winds, southerlies and most of the rainfall. All right, speaking of that, let's have a look at the business of the Briley. Predicted precipitation, drips and drops across rooftops and crops, and there you see it. Coastal activity for New South Wales, even a little bit to the south, but mainly concentrated from the mid-north coast up to the Queensland border. That is where the action is. Hardly a cloud in the sky west of the coast, and certainly out west of the divide, it will be one brilliant-looking weekend. All right, where do we go for our Friday feels? I know where we go. We go to your place. We get you busy on your phone. You send me your photographs and it looks like this. It's been unsettled up at Lennox Head. Don't worry about that. We were there courtesy of a better booty photography. And look at that storm. A little bit of that stuff. Boom, crash, opera over the next two days in that neck of the woods. If you've got one, folks, it's pretty easy. Share them with me on Instagram. Hashtag them. Daily Bailey NSW and follow the wee weatherman on Instagram. It's Daily Bailey. 10, be part of this great collection. Here's a little bit of beauty in Fiona Brown's backyard. The bee and the brilliant flower. Uh, when we're in lockdown, we can go into the backyard and if you can find beauty like that and share it with us, well, you make our day that much more interesting. Thank you very much, Fiona. Tumut was just glorious. Share it on Insta, hashtag Daily Bailey NSW. And look at this, imagine the rainbow dotting the eyes on the central coast. Don't you love that shot? Have a look at it. Thank you very much. Tom Newman Photography. Very, very clever gear. You really do help entertain us in the days of lockdown. All right, let's go and find you a forecast, huh? It's a Friday night tomorrow, Saturday, and the world is good. Perth, 22 degrees, fine and sunny. Adelaide, what are you up to? Down to seven for a top of 18 degrees, fine and sunny. The Alice, beaming at you at 23. Broome joins in that party, 34 degrees. Darwin, a delight, of course it is. The pubs are open, 34 degrees. Cairns, a shower and 28. Brisbane, fine and sunny and 24 degrees. It's a little bit stickyish around Sydney as far as the shower but mainly a clear day 19. Canberra down to one top of 15 degrees. Melbourne 18 and the sun is out and Saturday is a sensation in Hobart at 17 degrees. New South Wales zooms into Bales. Here comes Super Saturday. Broken Hill 19, Dubbo 19 degrees. Orange fine and sunny 13. Clear blue sky Wagga Wagga 18 degrees. Bega a little windy 20. Nowra a shower they stick. Newcastle likewise 21 degrees. Tamworth 21 glorious. Coffs Harbour 21 and Lisbon 21 degrees, that's where the majority of the showers will be. Super suburbs of Sydney tomorrow will flick the showers mainly. Penrith 20 degrees, Parramatta 19, Gosford 20 degrees. The official forecast for Sydney tomorrow. A clearing day after some early rain in the early hours of the morning. Full seven day forecast in 25 minutes. the news happening now, back in business, the state takes its first small step towards recovery from COVID-19, with some of our favourite places now open to 10 members of the public. But as Sydney gets moving again, we're being told not to use public transport during peak hours, with fears it could lead to a spike in cases. And how artificial intelligence is helping couples conceive, that story is coming up. Well, after 53 days in lockdown, many of our favourite places took the first steps towards reopening today. Ten people are now allowed to dine in cafes, restaurants, pubs and clubs, and playgrounds are open again to give parents some relief. The Premier is flagging it may only be a few more weeks until the state takes the next step forward. A taste of freedom. Customers sitting down to be served for the first time in seven weeks. I'm very excited. This is, I just had my first sort of cafe coffee in like three months. I'm pretty, it's good to be back out. Patrons lined up at cafes early, but diners at the Star Casino's Sokyo restaurant were some of the first served when it opened for sushi at midnight when the lockdown relaxed. From today, 10 people can sit in restaurants, cafes and pub bistros, but for many, it won't make much difference. 10 people, it helps, but it's not, it doesn't help us actually do full service yet. 
What number do you think you might need for full service? I think at least 20 would be good, which I understand is stage two. The first stage of eased restrictions mean five people can now visit at a home. A group of 10 can now meet outside. Couples can also have 10 wedding guests, while funerals are allowed 20 mourners if they're inside and 30 if they're outdoors. But social distancing on public transport is causing headaches. Try and not touch the seats or anything like that. Hope somebody pushes the stop button before me. We don't want any more people at this stage catching public transport in the peak. Do not use public transport. If you're not already on the bus or the train in the morning, do not catch public transport in the peak. The opposition wants a clearer plan, especially as the return to school ramps up. As a parent myself, I'm completely perplexed about how she expects hundreds of thousands of school children to get to school. But even those following the rules are at risk. After two weeks in quarantine, one Aussie who flew home from overseas tested positive just yesterday. After flying on Qantas Flight 537 from Brisbane to Sydney on Tuesday, May 12th. Um, we are going to be doing contact tracing on the flight because we do believe they may have been infectious on the flight. Showing that while restrictions have eased, the virus has not. Sydney paid for 10 News First. Australia may be starting to open up again, but authorities are concerned about the next health crisis brought on by this pandemic. The National Cabinet has come up with a new united mental health plan, worried the loneliness from isolation and stress caused by job losses and finances could lead to a wave of complex issues. These things can build up, they can brew, people can dwell, and so we want to get ahead of the curve. Elective surgery is also fully reopening with the states and territories set to, to their own timetables for when it will resume. The most promising news yet for loyal Virgin customers arrived today with the rewards program taking bookings from September onwards. It comes as a key deadline just expired for bidders wanting to snap up the airline. Hugh Remington explains. As so often these days for people working in the aviation industry, there are mixed signals. The good news today is that the first preliminary propositions by those people who are wanting to buy Virgin, well, their ideas are now with the administrator. The administrator says there are several very serious proposals available to them now for refloating the airline. The Virgin workforce are creditors in that process. Their main union says their priority is that the new buyer will back a full-service airline and be there for the long haul. These bidders commit to staying with this asset, this good virgin asset, for a long period so we don't get private equity funds cutting and running. But there are new concerns for many who rely on the airline industry. Thousands who work in airport security and airline catering, they are now out of work and many are missing out on JobKeeper payments because they're employed by foreign-owned companies that are not allowed into the JobKeeper scheme. I was born in Australia, I grew up in Australia, I work in Australia and I pay taxes. Why am I and the people I work with not getting access to JobKeeper? Josh Frydenberg can fix this with a stroke of a pen. And he needs to. That is one of many anomalies in the JobKeeper scheme, which is now being relied on by six million Australians as their main source of income. In other news for Virgin, it remains the case that the new buyer of the airline should be known by the end of June. And a very promising sign today with the Virgin Rewards system saying that flights can be booked using those Virgin points from September. You can start booking them today for flights from September. U.S. President Donald Trump has threatened to cut all ties with China over this coronavirus outbreak, a move he claims would save half a trillion dollars. Speaking on Fox News, he said the relationship was so bad with the Chinese president, he didn't even want to speak with him. We could cut off the whole relationship. Now, if you did, what would happen? You'd save $500 billion. China has responded by calling the president a giant baby on the brink of a breakdown. A man who threatened to kill police with a 30 centimetre kitchen knife, giving them no choice but to shoot him, has been sentenced to two and a half years behind bars. A sentence police are calling a slap in the face to hard-working officers who put their lives on the line daily. Police are on the front line for the community to try to keep people safe. 
and we really do expect some support from the legal system when these matters go through court. Robert Hampton will be eligible for release in December 2021. High-profile barrister and wife of a Hollywood superstar, Amal Clooney, has told politicians in Canberra that Australia could be a global leader in human rights. The A-lister appeared before a parliamentary hearing into laws being considered which would ban international criminals from our shores. Beaming live from Los Angeles into a committee room in Canberra. Good. Can I ask you to state your name and the capacity in which you appear today? Yes, absolutely. My name is Amal Clooney. I'm a barrister at Doughty Street Chambers in London and I am the deputy chair of the high-level panel of legal experts. Hardly in need of an introduction, the high-profile human rights lawyer and wife of Hollywood star George Clooney, proving nobody's immune from pesky technical difficulties. We still can't hear you. Maybe your microphone is muted. I'm trying to read your lips and it sounds like <laughs> you're saying that it isn't. <laughs> With audio up and running... And apologies for the technical difficulties in joining you. The world-renowned barrister made her position known on an important subject. I support the proposal that Australia should adopt a new law allowing for targeted sanctions against human rights abusers. The inquiry before Federal Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee is looking into laws banning international criminals from Australia. Yet so far, only three states, the US, Canada and the UK, have robust global powers to impose targeted sanctions on human rights grounds. I think it's time that Australia joined the club. Amal Clooney told the hearing the global health crisis we're facing has only exacerbated human rights issues around the world, explaining that abuse thrives when nobody's watching. In the last two months, we've seen more than 80 governments rush through emergency laws that grant them sweeping new powers over their people. That is why what you are considering here today is so important. Amber Austin Wright for 10 News First. We might not be able to go on holidays just yet, but planning one, well, it's often half the fun. To help, a two-day live stream of Australia's best destinations and experiences is hoping to inspire some of that wanderlust and revive a long-suffering industry when domestic travel restarts. This is the man who helps Chris Hemsworth look like this. And after a live-streamed workout tomorrow from Byron Bay, you could too. Look, I, I can't say that your face is going to look like Chris Hemsworth, but your body is definitely going to be closer to looking like Chris Hemsworth. He's a good-looking man. This personal training session is kicking off a two-day adventure around the country. Starting tonight on Network 10, live from Oz, will stream the best of our homegrown places and faces to get Aussies planning their next trip when coronavirus restrictions ease. People will venture out of their houses and maybe do day trips, some local um, overnight trips before going interstate. On the hour, every hour, viewers watching the stream will be transported to 32 locations, from a living room kids' dance party... Hi, we're, we're the Wiggles. Wiggles! ..to the top end, where there are crocs to be wrangled. And we might come and catch up with Otis. Oak Ridge Winery is taking care of Saturday lunch from Victoria's Yarra Valley. Just having a look around for some herbs uh, to dry for our cheese making class. Last year, international travellers spent about $45 billion seeing Australia, and we spent almost as much on overseas holidays. But with international travel ruled out for the foreseeable future, that's money that can be spent at home. Now that's up for grabs for Australian domestic tourism operators. A welcome chance to explore our own backyard. Sydney Pete for 10 News First. Make sure you tune in. Coming up next, a major bank admits to millions of dollars in money laundering breaches. In sport, is Bryce Cartwright being cleared to play in the NRL? A win for anti-vaxxers. And the Giants gear up for the restart of the AFL season. AFL's back, but not quite as you know it. Plus, Tommy's rated Aussie lounge rooms for the greatest legends of lockdown, 6.30. 
Jian, why do you love LifeSpace Broad Spectrum Probiotic from Chemist Warehouse? LifeSpace Broad Spectrum Probiotic is Australia's number one selling probiotic. Its 15 multi-strain formulation helps encourage good bacterial diversity to support a healthy microbiome. It can also assist with immune system function and general health and well-being. At Chemist Warehouse, LifeSpace Broad Spectrum Probiotic is only $23.99. LifeSpace is my go-to probiotic brand for the whole family. Make it yours too. Live, look, feel well at Chemist Warehouse. I cross the road when I want to, okay, because I'm an adult. So I just cross the road and I walk straight into the Queensland Police and he said, Oi, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm being an adult. <laughs> he said, do you have any ID? And I'm like, no, because I don't need it anymore. <laughs> if I ever get asked for ID, I think, if you think I'm under 18, I am not well, just quietly. <laughs> When was the last time you washed your hands? Go on. In 20 seconds, you can help reduce the spread of infection. We don't care which soap you use. We care that you care. For you and for all. Dove. We remain dedicated to helping Australians. We've introduced a help program with a range of relief options to assist customers currently in need. Call us to find out how we can tailor help options for you. OMG, what a night. I probably look like... Shut up, my skin looks amazing. New Ole Retinol 24 Night Serum. Look how plump and bouncy. Girl, it really works. <laughs> it was this photo <laughs> that she put up of me online. Uh, and I was sort of like, why didn't you tell me I was losing my hair? <laughs> I thought he knew. Reached your turning point? The doctors at Ashley and Martin could help regrow your hair. With Belong, you get 10 gigs of mobile data for $25 a month. That's 10 gigs of family time. 10 gigs of scrolling through memory lane. 10 gigs of holiday escapes. Or 10 gigs of catching up with the family. Plus, unlimited international calls and texts to selected countries for $5 extra. We all spend family time differently. Together, we're different. Belong. Don't let hay fever ruin your day. Try Telfast from Chemist Warehouse. It gives fast, non-drowsy relief from hay fever allergies. Telfast 180 milligram 70 tablets are $29.99. Live, look, feel well at Chemist Warehouse. It's a difficult time for Aussie families. We can't change what's happening, but we can bring you something fresh and tasty. And when we do, you'll know that your family is helping ours. So thank you from our family to yours when we can all get out of our own backyards, it's time to start enjoying this one. In a 10 special, we talk to the people and visit the places that remind us why we're so lucky to live in the lucky country. Join us for the Love Australia Project, 7.30 tonight on 10. Last year, Westpac was thrown into turmoil when it was accused of millions of dollars of money laundering offences. It made a startling admission today and is now on track to pay the largest penalty in Australian corporate history. Charlotte Goodlett has today's top stories in finance. It's the financial scandal that claimed the scope of a CEO and a chairman. And now big bank Westpac has made some big admissions about millions of money laundering breaches. In its defence submitted to the federal court late today, the company admitted to breaking the law 23 million times. It also says it could have kept a closer eye on a dozen customers the regulator suspected of pedophilia. But it does deny it didn't have an anti-money laundering program in place. Theoretically, the penalty for this could be enormous between $391 trillion and $483 trillion. But let's be real, it's unlikely to be anywhere near that. So far, Westpac has put aside $900 million to settle and it will now look for common ground with the financial regulator, Austrac. It didn't affect the stock price, though. Westpac was up by about 2%. The market on the whole surged at the start of the day. By noon, it eased, but in the afternoon, it went up again. End of the day, more than 1.4% up. Materials and financial were the strongest performance while tech stocks lagged again. Right now, the Aussie dollar is mostly unchanged against the majors. Right now, it is buying 64.5 US cents. 
An artificial intelligence program that is helping couples conceive through IVF is being put through its paces. A major trial of the embryo selection tool is underway to determine if it's better at the job than humans. A path to parenthood powered by artificial intelligence. Sunshine Coast couple Sarah and Tim Keyes wanted to boost their odds of a successful pregnancy, having endured two traumatic miscarriages. We decided that anything we could do that would reduce the chance of miscarriages and complications would be really helpful. The couple turned to IVF and put their faith in a machine to choose the embryo that had the best chance of growing into a baby. It worked. Sarah is now six months pregnant. We're very excited. We're expecting a little girl. Yeah, it's great. The technique involves growing embryos in an incubator fitted with time-lapse cameras. A high-tech AI software program sifts through the thousands of images produced by the cameras, crunches the data and decides which embryo is healthiest. It will actually get smarter the more information it has. The more patients we feed into it, the more different scenarios it has, the more robust the system actually becomes. Fertility experts believe it's more accurate than the human eye. They want to prove it by embarking on a global trial, the largest of its kind in the world. We're looking at recruiting about a thousand patients into this and that will tell us whether or not the system performs as good or better than our embryologists. If the machine wins out, it could reduce the time it takes for women to fall pregnant, meaning fewer rounds of costly IVF. Brendan Savage for 10 News First. New artist impressions have revealed a detailed transformation of Parramatta's state-of-the-art aquatic and leisure centre that is set to open its doors to the public in 2023. The highly anticipated project will feature outdoor and indoor pools, a water playground, community rooms, a fitness centre and a cafe is going to be the envy of the rest of Western Sydney, if not the whole of New South Wales. The $77 million project will replace the Parramatta Memorial Pool, which the state government demolished three years ago, in order to make room for the new Bankwest Stadium. Matt Burke is back now with the rest of the day in sport and Matt League bosses were well, promising the game will not only be bigger but it will be better. That's exactly right Sandra, good evening. NRL CEO Andrew Abdo believes the rest of the 2020 season will be faster and more unpredictable than ever due to the code switch to one referee. It comes after the NRL today released the draw for rounds three and four with the restart still on track for May 28. The State of Origin series tipped to follow the grand final that's pencilled in for October 25. We'll announce the, the dates for Origin when we announce the full season structure and the draw at the back end of next week. And the second instalments of the season gets underway with the Thursday night clash between Brisbane and Parramatta. The health official who cleared Bryce Cartwright to play insists it wasn't a win for anti-vaxxers. After receiving a medical exemption to avoid the flu shot, the Titans forward was tight-lipped as he returned to training this morning. No, I won't be making any comments today. Is this a win for anti-vaxxers then? Absolutely not, no. Um, he had a contraindication. After missing a week of training, he's likely to be benched for their round three clash against the Cowboys. The Swans and the Giants will return to team training on Monday with the AFL season to restart on Thursday, June 11. Giants midfielder Lockie Whitfield says getting back out on the field will be a welcome relief to his teammates after several frustrating weeks. Some light at the end of the tunnel now. It feels like all the training sessions we've done with no sort of goals or end date has sort of been worth something now. You kind of have to do whatever it takes to get the game back up and running. And the revamped draw will be released in the next 10 days. Melbourne Cup winning trainer Danny O'Brien says the race will lose none of its esteem without the internationals. Vow and Declare was first locally bred winner in 10 years, but the Aussies could have a leg up this year with international raiders unlikely to be able to travel. O'Brien says it'll take none of the gloss off. No, <laughs> I can't say that. There'll be a Melbourne Cup run and one as there has been for 158 years. And um, yeah, they've been run through through wars and pandemics and I'm sure it'll be the equal of any of the 158 that have gone before it. And O'Brien will settle up King of Leo Grants on tomorrow's Andrew Ramsden Stakes at Flemington, a race that guarantees entry to the Cup for the winner. 
Now, when you hit the court for a bit of one-on-one -on -one action with the boys, Peter Parker is the last superhero you expect to come up against. There's some sweet moves from Spider-Man threading his way through the zone. So the suited up web slinger can net our play of the day. <laughs> I think it's Bailey in that suit. I, 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 he's got some moves. He's not that slick. <laughs> well done. I don't <laughs> think so. He does try and make out he is, but we know he isn't. Anyway, good stuff. Coming up next, Bailey is back. I'm going to get it. You know I am. Wait for it. With the all-important weekend weather forecast, Tim. Who doesn't love a classic apple pie? Apple pie is very simple. How can I elevate it? How can I elevate it? They're watching me. I'm trying to ignore them. I'm just trying to stay calm. I'm feeling a lot of pressure. This dome, this dome has to be perfectly done. Has to be perfectly done. There's no room for error. No room for error. The night. Where another one of your favourites goes. The Bombshell Elimination. 7.30 Sunday. One, two, three, four. So clap it back. Hey, clap, clap. So clap it back. Hey, I'm not getting out of here right back. Cause I'm not going to stand around living like that. So clap it back. Clap it. Clap, clap. All right. So clap it back. Hey, hey. Centrum provides multiple health benefits in just one tablet. Centrum, complete from A to Zinc. Go on. At Devondale, we believe great milk comes from cows that graze free. Get massive May savings at Chemist Warehouse. Our huge Money Savers catalogue is out now. All big brand cosmetics are half price. All L'Oreal and Maybelline, half price. All Rimmel and Sally Hansen, half price. And all Revlon and Nude by Nature, half price. That's right, all big brand cosmetics are half price. For the biggest range at the lowest prices, shop at Chemist Warehouse and stop paying too much. Anaconda's ultimate snow gear sale is on now. Adult snow jackets and pants, just $49 each. And kids snow jackets and pants, only $39 each. Head in store or shop online at anacondastores.com. Anaconda! At Harvey Norman, get 60 months interest-free and receive a bonus gift card up to the value of $500. The more you spend on 60 months interest-free, the greater the value of the bonus gift card. Shop for laptops, TVs, fridges, ovens, lounges, beds, flooring, bath vanities and so much more. Shop in our spacious stores or online. We're practicing social distancing to keep our community safe. Get 60 months interest-free and receive a bonus gift card valued at up to $500 now at Harvey Norman. Hurry, offer ends Tuesday. No. Get AHM hospital cover from only $15.75 a week. Yay. It's that easy. So you can get back to doing whatever it is you like to do. Hey. Even that. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. Introducing the all-new Palmy Classics range at Subway. Chicken Palmy with rich marinara sauce, chicken and ham Palmy with smoked leg ham, and the chicken and pepperoni Palmy, all topped with double melty mozzarella cheese. Grab a Palmy today at Subway. Up next, AFL's comeback details confirm. So how long before your team hits the field? Tommy's got a new batch of legends to battle it out with the skills they've learnt in lockdown. And Aussie singer-songwriter Missy Higgins joins us to chat about her special new project. The Project Next.
Well, that wasn't the flashest Friday I've ever dished up. But, hey, it's the weekend. The pressure's on, and I'm up to it. Let's hit the Daily Bailey weather wall. The forecast where we get it all. Big high pressure system gives me some hope here. It will promote fine and dry and sunny skies to most of New South Wales. I say most of New South Wales because we have a dastardly little trough system just hanging off the coast of northern New South Wales. That's going to keep things unsettled from around about the mid-north coast up to the Queensland border and there'll be a little bit of thunderstorm activity and some precipitation in that. The rest of Australia though, pretty much a dry old argument thanks to the high pressure. All right, New South Wales, how do you look on a super Saturday? Broken Hill, that's what I'm talking about. Sunshine and 19 degrees. Dubbo says we'll have a little bit of that delightful stuff. 19. Orange is awesome, 13 degrees. Wagga Wagga, a wonder at 18. Canberra dishes up an autumnal classic, 15 degrees. Bega, a little bit of windiness in the air, but 20 degrees will do on a Saturday. Nara, sticky little day shower-wise, 19 degrees. Newcastle, likewise, 21. Tamworth, 21 degrees, mainly fine and sunny. And those showers, they're a bit of a nuisance in Coffs Harbour, 21 degrees, and Lismore, 21 degrees. But look on the bright side, Saturdays, the last time I checked, are way better than Mondays. All right, let's have a look at the super suburbs of Sydney tomorrow. And we're trying to get away without too much precipitation. Think we'll do it too. Most of the showers will be in the early hours of the morning. Penrith, 20 degrees. Richmond, 19. Gosford does 20. Terry Hills, 18 degrees. It'll be a sunny late morning and afternoon. Take it from me. Trust me, I'm a weekend weatherman. Here we go. Sunday, 21 degrees, glorious. Good looking week, actually. And in the west, absolutely nothing to worry about. Sunday, 20 degrees and a sunshine week. Can I tell you something ridiculous? Of course. You do I'm most... off to a restaurant. I was going to say, you do most nights. But tonight's time for you to play. <laughs> Watch out, everyone. Bailey's on the loose. Tonight, the government pledges millions...